being and living the love you are. How to let love transform your life. Love is the all-pervasive substance that holds the universe as one. It's not a sentimental emotion, a sensual feeling, or a tool to manipulate relationships. To experience love as the ground of your being and to live from this foundation is to transform every moment of your existence into higher awareness. Love is most often referred to as an emotion in our culture that you either have or don't have at any particular time in your life. It's divided into parental, filial, romantic, sexual, and so on. As such, it is treated as a commodity to be sought after, sung about, fantasized over, and generally regarded as a mystery because of its fleeting nature. Bards lyricize its fickleness. Religions extol its virtues, and it's regarded as an inalienable right like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness guaranteed by the United States constitutions. Philosophers and poets have held it as one of their favorite topics. I believe this is because of its essential nature to our very life. Between the world wars, many orphan infants died in their cribs despite having all the food and shelter needed to survive. It was discovered that the lack of touch, warm, loving contact, was the missing ingredient that made the life or death difference. Once prescribed for them, the incidence of crib death greatly reduced. You could say they were not given love, and that is true. But more importantly, they were not reminded that they are lovable. They did not experience themselves as a being of love or as loving to be. Other infants in the same circumstances did not die. Many people go for years without human contact. In fact, some are even allergic to it. Yet they instinctively know they are loved and their life is precious. It is when we forget this that we suffer most, even more than experiencing physical pain alienation from the love we are is unbearable. And we are the only ones that can create this state in ourselves. People can endure immense torture or even hatred. It's only when they give up and turn against themselves that life is no longer worth living to them. How can this be that the most precious gift of life can be rejected by ourselves? As beings of free will, we can identify with whatever we choose. If I choose to see myself as a slug, you can't stop me. You can encourage, cajole, try to inspire or wake me up, and I can still reject it all. It's most often owning and sharing your love that will help me out of my trance of depression. Coming back to experience the love I am is the ultimate cure for self-alienation. I come back to the attraction of being connected to my true self, not the fabricated illusion of worthless matter. Love is the power of attraction, the bond which connects me to you, the planet to the solar system, electrons to the nucleus of the atoms making up your body. This may seem very theoretical and impersonal, but I submit it's as personal as it gets in fact, it's the glue that holds the fabric of the universe and you and me together. Even in the realm of hard sciences, it's being discovered that there is an attractive force that goes beyond time and space and is faster than the speed of light. Mothers know when their child is in danger halfway around the world. People lift cars off from loved ones in an accident. Photons have observable interactions with matter at long distance instantaneously. A British biologist, Rupert Sheldrake, did an experiment with a homebound dog, JT, whose owner, Pamela Smart, received randomly placed phone calls telling her to return home. In over 100 videotape trials, as soon as the owner received the call on her cell phone, her dog ran to the door in expectation of her arrival. 
Paul Pearsall, a psychologist who researched the effects of heart transplants on their recipients in his book, The Heart's Code, cites case after case in which characteristics of the heart donor, of whom the recipient had no knowledge, spontaneously began exhibiting traits of the donor, from the foods they formerly did not like to activities of which they had no knowledge. He coined the term the L factor for love, which seemed to transmit the donor's information cellularly. One little girl, he cites, who received a heart transplant began having dreams of the person who murdered the girl who was her donor and about whom she knew nothing such that she was able to lead the police to capture the culprit. These are all documented cases reported in scientific literature. What does this have to do with you? Most of us have had numerous experiences of synchronicity in our lives that cannot be explained logically and thus dismissed. We say it was coincidence or that we were lucky or unlucky. This mentality imputes that we are separate entities having minimal control of our fate. If we were love, we might say, then bad things would not happen to us. However, it could be just the opposite. Because we are an integral part of an all-loving universe, we have the free will to experiment and discover for ourselves, individually and as a collective, what is in harmony with our essential nature and what is not. From this perspective, every, quote, bad experience in my life is only bad in as so far as I do not learn from it or impute its source as something malevolent outside of me. This mentality tends to create chaos and fear, pitting us against one another and reinforcing separation. We then create pseudo-intimacy by finding common enemies to give a, a reason for bonding. It's like the movies in which hostile aliens invade the earth and all of a sudden sworn enemies have a cause that unites them. What if we decided that our common enemy was ignorance of the truth that we are one? Fear and hatred that waste the resources on our planet that could create a better life for everyone. What would it take for you to be willing to try on a different perspective? That you are made of that magnetic force of which the universe is comprised and that you have the power to affect change not only in the quality of your life, but in the life of the planet. There's no way we're gonna just trick ourselves into peace and cooperation. We must make a conscious choice for love and then follow through with conscious loving action. There's a story told about Albert Einstein on his deathbed. Now, I have no idea if this is true or not, but I like the point so much that I'm willing to repeat it. It's said that when asked if he had any parting words of wisdom to give to the world before he left, that he thought for a long time, and to the amazement of those who were waiting for another E equals MC squared, he simply shared this thought. The most important question facing humanity today is if we live in a friendly universe or not. Now, the reason I love this vignette, accurate or not, is that it puts our fate right back in our lap. Because no matter what the circumstances of our world, it is us that is going to interpret them as loving or not and justify our actions accordingly. Historical evidence will support those who interpret it. But by my personal tally, those whom I know or have heard of that come from a loving perspective seem to have created greater harmony, productivity, and cooperation than those who propagated fear. My conscious choice is to make this cause part of my life work as a teacher. If it fits for you, I invite you to take a virtual course in the School of Integrative Psychology beginning at the end of this January. For any student willing to change their life perspective on a cellular level over a nine-month period, each month of the nine-month journey will engage in practices that radically upend the roadblocks to owning the innocence and purity 
of being in your sacred heart and radiating this glow to your world. Topics include love and impassioned peace. The seven aspirations of innocence, compassion, abundance, wisdom, peace, forgiveness, and joy. Desires of the heart. Your beloved. Mysticism. The alchemy of love and attracting and sustaining holy relationships. Practices include the breath of love, perfecting holy vision, the languages of love, changing your reputation, finding your love groove, building your inner love temple, choosing loving guides and partners, growing in a loving community, and maintaining your love light through death and dying. Our goals are to transform our experience to being in love with and nurtured by life daily, to have a, a chest of inner love potions for every life challenge, to build a reservoir of loving energy to tide us through dark nights of illusion, to attract loving companions who delight in sharing love with us daily, to be strengthened by a community dedicated to spreading love on our planet. This nine-month series is open to students anywhere in the world who want to engage in life-transforming practices in a dedicated community. Class presentations will be videotaped by me and sent with materials and exercises included. I will send a daily inspirational sharing by email. Students will experiment and share with their results via email or some other form of video conferencing like Skype or FaceTime as they choose with other classmates. For more information on joining, see our Transformations e-newsletter or contact us at info at transformationsusa.com. This is Jim Morningstar, supporting you to be and to live the love that you are.